seat. Oh, it's so good to be here tonight. Um, can someone help me? There's a black table over there with my uh, notes on it and there's also this little table just by the side here that has some cups and other things. I'm all into the visuals. If you tuned into Friday Night Live uh, a few weeks ago, I also did a water analogy. So here we go again. It's, it's happening. It's happening. It's good. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Burnt arm and everything. Give it up for Geordie. Oh, lovely. Okay. Are you okay? All right. That's good. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Well, I'm so excited, guys. You're all here. There's lots of you. We've really missed you. Unfortunately, Matt is unwell tonight and our children are also unwell tonight, hence why they are not here. Um, but hopefully they'll be here, all of them, next week to you know, just be little cute faces around, particularly the girls. Matt's cute too, but, you know, um, I'm really keen. I'm really, really excited for tonight, but I'm also really, 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 really excited for Summerfest that is happening and it's going ahead and I'm excited. All right, so I just want to tell you guys, I'm going to encourage you guys, you know, Jordi and Cal gave you a good overview of, like, what's happening, what we're doing, but I want to tell you, be there. Like, actually be there. Position yourself where God is. <laughs> and God is with you all the time. We know that. But how this, this is a way that you can start your year off and actually position yourself to hear from God, to, to get vision for your year, to actually position your heart in the place that you want to go for the rest of the year, you know? We're going to be talking about a theme that maybe you've like picked up on um, through the flyer and stuff, if you've checked out the website or the little QR scanny thing, which we'll have later. But we're talking about out of this world. That is our theme for Summerfest. And we're really keen because we're going to talk about how we are different and we're called to be different. We're not called to be like everyone else. And the Bible actually says in the word that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And so what does that mean? What does that look like? How do we actually live that way? So that's what we're going to unpack at Summerfest. Powerful morning sessions, like even more powerful night sessions. It's going to be awesome. And then on the Saturday, we're going to have our breakout sessions as well, which you guys will get to choose um, what breakout sessions you go to, which is going to do them in the afternoon and then finish off with a really awesome night session and then come out for church on Sunday night as well. It's going to be great. All right. Who's coming? You guys are the least, like Ivor is more excited than you. Who's coming? It's better. That is better. All right. I expect more. I know it's the first week back, but I expect more, okay? All right. So I just want to tell you a little bit of a story about uh, me. The title of my message, if you're taking notes, is called The Kingdom is for Everyone, Including You. I pointed to no one deliberately because um, I don't want to exclude anyone. On that note, have you ever been left out of something? Yeah, me too. I know, right? Not invited to a birthday party, too short to go on a ride. I don't know, you name it. Have you ever been left out of something because of something that was just out of your control? You couldn't do anything about that thing, so, but you were still left out. Me too. I want to tell you a story. When I was about nine years old, maybe 10, I can't really remember, me and my family, we went on a cruise ship holiday. Wow, great. If you have ever been on a cruise ship holiday time, you know what I'm talking about. If you have never been on a cruise ship holiday time, I am sorry and I really pray that one day you get to experience that because it's great. But, you know, let me just paint the picture for you. This giant ship, like it's so giant, like bigger than what you can imagine. You walk, maybe I remember it being bigger because I was really small, but I don't know. But you walk up to it and it's just really big and you're like, wow, I wasn't expecting it to be that big. But pool, water slide, giant chest set, if you're into that, all you can eat, buffet breakfast every single day. It's so good. And like, is, just pause for a second. Is it just me or are like scrambled egg buffet breakfast scrambled eggs like just way better than 
any other scrambled eggs you ever have in your whole life. Like, literally, it's just so good. And the bacon is just like, I don't know what they do to it, but it's just, it's just good. Yeah. All right. Visiting islands, you know, like doing a cool stuff, getting your hair braided if you want to, like, you know, if you're into that. It was so cool. But as like a young kid, it was like just the best thing ever. Like we were going on a cruise and it was so fun. And I just was so keen to get in that pool and go down the waterside like 50 times. And it was just so exciting. But, you know, unfortunately, on the first day of the cruise, it was raining the whole day. No pool, no water slide. Great. Second day, here we go. Sun was out, it was shining, birds were singing, you know, I don't know, sing me that song, whatever it is. Um, birds flying high, you know that one? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sun was out, birds were singing, it was time to go in the pool, to get down that water side. We were keen, me and my brothers, so keen. Silas was like a baby, so he wasn't keen. Um, he was keen to climb over the edge and jump in that pool. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Silas. Um, but second day, beautiful day. We were on the boat all day because, you know, you have these like sea days where you're traveling to the next destination, to the island, so you were on the boat. They, in my opinion, were the best days because you got to explore this massive big cruise ship, which is so cool. So my brothers and I headed straight for that pool. We're going down that water slide after, of course, our all-you-can-eat buffet breakfast. And we planned on staying there for most of the day. Lined up, head down the water slide, go down the water slide, land in the pool. Fun times. Great. Let's do it again. Run to go and climb up the stairs. Boom. Slipped over and I broke my leg on the second day of a 10-day cruise. Yeah, do you feel my pain? Some of you are laughing, but a lot of you are like, oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. My leg, it slid underneath the stairs and my body from like the momentum of like running just like kept going. And you can, you can probably picture it in your head. I'm so sorry for creating that mental image. <laughs> and my leg snapped. And it hurt a lot. It hurt a lot. But you know, the suckiest thing was that for the rest of that holiday, I was stuck on the ship. I couldn't go to any of the islands because I couldn't get my cast wet or get sand in it or whatever. I actually went for one, like to one of the islands at the very end. I was like, stuff this. Like I'm putting a plastic bag on my leg and I'm getting on this island. Like I don't care. And I did and it was great. But I obviously couldn't go in the pool for the rest of the time uh, or down the water side for that matter. I mean, I'm sure you gathered that. And because the ship from like being out at sea was so rocky, I wasn't just on crutches, I had to be in a wheelchair, a wheelchair for 10 days. Worst thing ever. Second day of a 10 day cruise, broke my leg and then I was excluded from everything because of something that I couldn't control. Actually, if I didn't run near the pool, life lesson for you guys, don't run near the pool. <laughs> um, actually, just don't run. Run running is not a good idea. Just don't. Do something else. <laughs> um, you know, it was still a fun time and I made the most of it, but it definitely could have been better, I'll tell you that much. Um, but tonight, I'm going to tell you a story about a man in the Bible and he was excluded from society because of something that was out of his control. He had a disease called leprosy. Everyone say leprosy. Leprosy. Does anyone actually, have you ever heard of leprosy before, aside from the Bible? <laughs> Love that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, leprosy, for those of us who don't know, is a disease that was actually quite common in Jesus' time because there was no cure for it. It affects your hands and your feet and your limbs. You actually lose feeling in your fingers and your toes. Um, 
you also develop like these sores all over your body. It's horrible. Sometimes you actually even lose your limbs. They just like die and fall off. Or your fingers would like deform so that you couldn't use your hands. Like it, it was so horrible. Like what a horrible disease to have. It's actually still around, but it's less common because it's treatable, which is praise God for that. But, you know, people with leprosy, they were outcasts of their society. Literally, they were actually like cast out from their villages. And they were sent to live in their own little leper colony. No one could touch them because the disease was highly contagious. In fact, they actually had to stay a minimum of 50 feet away from anyone. Even their family. And when they were walking into town, they would have a bell ringing. I meant to find a bell, but I did, forgot, basically, so sorry about that. Um, they had a bell, and they'd have to yell out, unclean, unclean, like incoming, don't t- stay away, don't touch me, unclean. So everybody knew to stay away from them. And it was actually believed that if you had leprosy, that you were cursed by God, that there was no hope. That was it. You're done. And they were left out in their leper colony until they either died, which was the likely option, or they got better and they got a certificate from the priest to say that they were healed. But when Jesus comes to town, we know that things change, right? Right? Come on, guys. All right. Matthew chapter 8. We're going to go there. In verses 1 through to 3, it says this. Jesus is, Jesus is in town. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Good story. That's a feel-good movie right there. Thanks, Jesus. But you know, Jesus was like, he was that guy. He was the guy that liked to make everyone think twice about what they thought they knew. You know? You know one of those people? I know one of those people. There was always meaning behind everything that he did. And usually it was actually to make the people that thought they knew what was right question their beliefs. This wasn't just a typical healing that Jesus did here. He didn't just heal this leper so that this guy could just be free of leprosy for the rest of his life. Although that was part of it and that's good too. Jesus healed this man to actually illustrate something about the kingdom of God. And we've been talking about the kingdom of God for the last however many weeks on Friday Night Live. Shout out Friday Night Live. Never shouting you out again, but it was a good time. Jesus had healed before. He'd healed the sick, the blind, lame, deaf. He'd raised people from back to life. He'd healed deformed hands. But this man, get this, this man that's recorded here in Matthew was the very first leper that Jesus had healed. Amazing. And it was a big deal because no one touched lepers. Lepers had no one. It was thought to be their fault that they were cursed by God. And obviously it was their sin or, you know, an offering that they'd forgotten to do the right way or whatever. That's why they were unwell. They had no support, no healing, no options nowhere to turn, they weren't accepted or loved. But when Jesus comes to town, things change. And Jesus sees the guys and gals with the leprosy. You know, Jesus used this healing as an illustration of the kingdom of God. And it's that this, God loves everyone and he excludes no one. Jesus died for everyone so that we all could be healed and have our lives changed despite the sin that separates us from God. 
No matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus died for you. But you know, the thing is that God, in his perfection and in his holiness, he cannot be around sin. The Bible actually says this in Isaiah chapter 59. It says, listen, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his ear too deaf to hear your call. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Actually, in Romans 3, it says, just in case you were wondering if this was relevant to you, for everyone has sinned. (laughs) Everyone. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. And you know, like leprosy, sin goes so much deeper than just the skin, just surface level. It's bacterial, it infects, it destroys and defiles and deforms and it eventually leads to death. And in Romans 6, it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, God flipped the idea of the kingdom on its head. He loved so much that he made a way for us to be included in his kingdom. You know what? Sin counts us out. It casts us out. But Jesus pulls us in. He pulls us in. And so I just want to show you a little bit tonight. I don't know if everyone can see this. But these cups, they have some water here. And basically they say sinner on the front because everyone sins. This is my sin food colouring. Because this this is what sin does. Really should have prepared this better, but okay. Oh, it's fine. Just a little little white line. Oh, oh, it's okay. I'll steal that girl's pen. It's all good. Oh, I'll just cheat here and there. It's fine. It's all good, right? It's all good. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's going places. It's not just staying on the surface. I can't open the yellow one. Oh, yep. Oh, it's all good. I'll just have sex before I'm married. It's fine. Oh, I said it. What? That got your attention. (laughs) Wow. It's a sin. Did you know? Oh, I'll just swear. It's all good. It's fine. Oh, you know, no one. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. (laughs) Before long, what we think doesn't even, it's just a drop. I'm just, just dabbling my foot in. Oh, it's fine. It takes over. The whole thing, and it actually blends into one colour, which is, I didn't plan that, but cool. Sin destroys. That I can't get that out of this water now. That I can't separate it. Sin destroys. It takes over your life. And the result, just like Romans says, the wages of my sin is death. And that, my friends, is why Jesus came on the cross to actually take our sin. Take our sin. He just takes it. Takes it away. Bye-bye. Goes on to Jesus. He takes our sin and he gives us new life. And I know that this demonstration is not going to be the most perfect demonstration because there's a little bit of green still left in the cups, but you get the idea, okay? New life. New life. You get, this person just gets a little bit of new life. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) Just a little bit, but that's enough. That is enough. (laughs) Sin counts us out, but Jesus pulls us in. What counts you out? Do you lie? Have you murdered someone? Are you a thief? Wow, you guys are answering my questions. You're being really honest tonight. That's great. Are you selfish? Because I am prideful. Have you said some unkind words to someone? Well, listen to this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, God made him who had no sin. Jesus had no sin. He was perfect to be sin for us 
so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Again, not a perfect illustration, but you get the idea. We become the righteousness of God. And when we give ourselves to Jesus and we present our mess and the discoloration of our water, he covers it. He changes us. He removes the stain of sin and cleanses us. So now we become the righteousness of God. And this is open to everyone. Everyone here in this room, everyone outside of this room, our families and friends, everyone. The kingdom no longer has the gates closed and only for the ones that can reach perfection. No, no, no. Jesus is there, the perfect one holding the gates open for us. But here's the thing that I kind of want to just touch on tonight. For the leper to kneel down before Jesus, it took some guts. Presenting himself before the Messiah in close proximity, knowing full well that he could have been killed for that act. It wasn't what he was supposed to do. But Jesus reached out and touched him. This guy, like, just can we just paint the picture here? This guy would not have been touched for years, maybe. No hugs, not even a handshake, probably not even a smile. And for Jesus to reach out and touch him was a big deal. And he changed his life. But then Jesus says something really interesting to him. In Matthew 8, we'll pick it up from verse 4. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. I thought this was a really interesting thing in the passage. And I was like, but but why? Why did Jesus actually instruct him not to tell anyone about it? It was a miracle. This is the first leper ever healed, ever healed cured from this disease. This was an absolute miracle. Why would Jesus tell him not to tell anyone about it? You know, this man was under grace. He was under grace. He was healed by the grace of God, but he was not above the law. The law did not become irrelevant to him just because he was healed by Jesus himself. And that is what Jesus is trying to illustrate in this passage is that sure you can have your life changed but do the right thing and live it out and you know I don't know if you've been tuning into Friday Night Live at all but if there's one that I think that you should tune into it is last week's one because Gabby spoke last week about something similar how the grace and the love of God it changes us it doesn't just change our circumstance or our situation it changes everything And the change that actually God makes in our hearts is evident in the way that we live it out. And in 2 Corinthians 5.15, it says that he died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. You know, as I close tonight, the three things that I want you to leave here tonight fully understanding is that the kingdom is open to everyone, including you. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you come from, how murky your sin water is, it doesn't matter. The kingdom is open for you. But the second thing is that we must present ourselves to Jesus. We must take our murky water and become vulnerable before him and say, Jesus, here I am. I'm not clean. (laughs) I'm clean. I've got the bell. And say, just have me, fix me, cleanse me, make me new. We need to present ourselves to Jesus. And then the third thing is that we need to live out, live out the change that he's made in us. Don't just 
allow this change to happen surface level and then go on living your life like it never happened. Allow this change to go deep and to change the way that you live. And in a minute, we're all going to stand and what we want to do tonight is we actually want to pray for you. And we're going to have leaders positioned all around the room, in the back, in the voids, some at the front. And we want, we want to offer prayer for you tonight. I don't know what this season has been like or where your faith is really at. But tonight, could we together present ourselves before Jesus? Let him see the vulnerable and the disgusting parts of who we are and change our lives from the inside out. You know, this season has had a lot of change, as Izzy was talking about, and it's changed us. But maybe tonight is a time to just sit and remember what it's like to just stop and to be still in His presence. Surrender everything to Him and allow His change to actually overtake our hearts. And as leaders kind of stand and position themselves around the room, and maybe if someone could help me clear this away, I just really felt to say tonight, are you anxious? Because he's got peace for you tonight. Are you depressed? Well, good news. Jesus has joy for you tonight. Are you uncertain? He is the solid rock that you can stand on. Has someone hurt you? Well, he will never let you down. Are you afraid? His perfect love casts out all fear. He can change you tonight. We just need to present ourselves before him and surrender it all. And maybe you need prayer from a leader and that is fine. And there's leaders, as you can see, positioned all around the room. But maybe you just want to stand in his presence on your own and you need a moment with God by yourself and that's okay too. So the team are going to lead us in a few songs and all of us are going to stand. And if you want to find a leader, go for it. And I'm just going to pray over all of us. So let's stand.